All right, so um, you can see I finished the, uh, the small uh, metal parts and rivets here on, on our main body. And now we will switch to, to the uh, small metallics on the arm. As long as I have my metallics on the pallet, I just want to do all, all the small metallic parts. And um, we'll first start with um, the parts here on, on the chain side. See, I've uh, already done the blue armor parts. It's really all the same. Okay, so this is now some of the uh, lead belcher metallic tone. Okay, and I'm trying to also paint these little uh, round elements here in silver. The half circles here. It's quite nice actually if you put a strong highlight on these because it will make the, uh, the lead look a lot more detailed. Same here for that little lend. like to, um, to put the highlight at the outer edge here of the V2 so I'm trying to just blend it here from the side so we can see the the bright edge here on the, on the side of the blade. And now some of that um, dark wash again. So um, it's the Stegadon scale green and some black to increase the the contrast right here. Okay, and some of that chrome to get the little highlights on on the round elements. So you can see also actually quite nice and easy. Um, but these little um, highlights here really uh, give a lot of detail to, to the blade. At this point, I think it would be nice to introduce also some, uh, some gold color to our model. And we'll do that with the glorious gold from Game Color. There are actually only a few game colors that I really like. One of the, is the Glorious Gold. I think the, the tone is really nice and the uh, it covers quite well. And it's a very rich gold. It's nice because you can go in a lot of different directions with that base tone, depending on how you mix it. You can see it's really quite a nice bright gold. Okay. You could still use the, there's nothing wrong with the Games Workshop Golds, it's just, this happens to be a color that, that you really like, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I haven't tried out um, all of the, the new um, paints from Games Workshop, so I still have plenty of old ones. Uh, uh, Too much paint, right? Yeah. And I mixed a bit of tank brown here in, in the gold for the lower side. And so pure again here for the top. Okay, make sure uh, you let that dry before you continue with um, the pure tank brown as a glaze. Okay, so tank brown.
and for the highlights of uh, gold, I tend to use also um, some silver metallics just to make it look even a bit uh, more contrasted and also to make them work well together with the silver metallics. I will just use some of the chrome, mix it with a bit of gold. Here I went a little over the border, so I have to soften that out with some gold tone. Yeah, and you can really play a, li a lot here with the intensity of the, uh, the gold this year. Now it's quite intense and I would like to bring it down a tiny bit so the, the contrast is not all that... The contrast to the blue is not all that strong. So I'm just um, giving it another thin glaze of the tint brown. Tone it down a bit. A little bit of black here in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, it's quite a nice, uh, nice little recipe for gold. Um, just, just uh, with um, three colors, and it works really nice as a contrast color with the, with the blue. And I think if uh, if you imagine the figure put together with the gold trimmings on the on the um, shoulder pads as well, that looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Right, um, just a tiny highlight here on the. Because you, you, you could be tempted, say, if you're doing all 30 of these in the box to, to rush through and just paint silver in all those areas with a wash or something, which is fine, which is cool. But yeah. If you're, if you're maybe taking a little bit of time with something like this to to introduce those little variations in colour, it'll break up all that blue as well. Yeah, and I think if you ha have gold on the shoulder pads, it's always good to have gold in another part as well. Mm -hmm. to yeah, to have it uh, harmonious in the end of the whole miniature. Um, but yeah, sh be sure, I mean, if you want to paint the whole box uh, as fast as you can to, to play with it, uh, I think sh I'm sure you you should stick to a simpler, simpler color scheme. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, yeah, I think you, you uh, understood how I, I'm tackling all these little metallic parts. And I will just continue with the other side of the Shainsword off cam and we will be back to add some uh, final um, details here. I would like to introduce some stripes and yellow on the on the Shainsword to also spice up the the miniature a little bit. And But I will do that after I've finished the rest of the metallic parts off cam. All right, thank awesome. you. All right, so um, here we are with, uh, I just attached the arm back to a pin so uh, we can just handle that part here a bit better. Um, I decided to go not for for a white color because I think that would be might uh, might be a little too distracting in the end. So I just decided to go for the opposite. So we're gonna paint that in black. Um, as you can see, I'm just mixing a bit of black and white here on the palette to get a nice dark gray. And uh, just highlight the dark part down here. Okay, and I'm trying to just with the side of the brush here 
just hit the side here of that upper grill. Give it a nice little highlight there. And we will try to also get them a transition with the highlight here on that side. What you've done there is not um, layering glazing though, right? That's white blending. Yeah, exactly. Just on that little part here, a little wet blending. I think wet blending is quite a nice technique. And if you've seen the other videos, you know that um, also the loader brush is somewhat of a uh, wet and wet blending. And I think it's not a secret that that is my favorite technique at the moment. Um, I think it's quite nice for little areas like that. But you do, we, something you mentioned earlier, you, you don't use just that technique, you use a variety of techniques yeah. to, to, to do a little shape. Definitely, so you see here just uh, for that little spot, you can also do some wet blending, you could also do it with layering and glazes. It's basically a matter of what you prefer. But a lot of different techniques get the, nearly the same result. And so if this is your first time watching one of these videos and maybe these are techniques that are new to you, if you want to do the same, if you use the same technique that Ben used to do the blue armor, just use that for the black. Just swap out the colors, but do exactly the same technique, the same process. Yep. Usually, um, if I would paint a larger uh, blue armor, uh, black armor, sorry, if I paint a larger black armor, Mm -hmm. um, I would also add some color to the black to, to make it uh, look a bit more interesting. So some blue, for example. Um, but as I have um, so much blue on the miniature, I think it's quite good to stay with a simple black and white here. Oh, okay. Because typically when you've done black before, you use dark sea blue, right? To put yeah, I add some, some blue in there. It's always, always blue. Okay. And... Now with the nice little it's, uh, strong highlights here, I think this here needs to get a bit lighter up here. Yeah, you can see it's still wet there, but once that is finished, it should look quite nice. Okay, I think that is uh, already okay for that small back part. Mm, I said earlier I would like to introduce some yellow stripes also here to, to the blue armor part. Um, you can see on the palette I have some um, a light ochre tone. Um, this here is called uh, Tau Light Ochre from the Game Social range. And we'll use that as in yellow. Sometimes it's better to take something like an ochre tone because usually they cover a bit better than, than just the pure yellow. And yeah, I would like to get like um, two stripes, I think. And it's quite important that um, that the paint is not too thin, otherwise it just runs over the surface. And it's um, better to start thin um, with a th uh, thin stripe and then um, make it wider in the end. This way you can easily correct the angle. Here where I have, have this uh, the cut here in the, in the blue, the weathering, I'd like to keep that cut also in the, in the yellow. Okay, I think I will uh, only do two straps, not three. Uh, I think I saw a, a, a concept in the uh, in the internet with three stripes that look quite cool, but uh, I think three stripes are easily 
reminding everyone of us of Adidas, so uh, I, I just want to avoid that. I'll put a uh, highlight with a bit of white in in our uh, ochre, and you will see that will make it look a lot more yellow actually. And also, not really as bright, also with a bit of white here on the lower side. Okay, um, here this line here got a this line here got a little thick. Uh, so I would like to just take a bit of the uh, Cantor blue. And get a little bit smaller, especially down here. And to increase the contrast, we will add a bit of uh, armor brown to the top. Just here. Again, for, for newcomers, just because Ben is using something like a, a color like Tank Brown, if you find a suitable brown in the Games Workshop range or any other, the Vallejo or Scale 75 or Mr. Payne or Darkstar, all these other color companies, it's it's fine. It just happens to be that's a color that he likes to use. Yeah, I, and I really like the the uh, um, the way how, how the paint behaves on the on the surfaces. The, the Tank Brown is slightly glossy and still here you have that little gloss differences to the, to the blue. Mm -hmm. um, just to keep it in tune with the sword, I will also add a bit here of the, uh, the tank brown here. Just in that shadow area, pull it back there. Just so that the blue looks uh, more the same. Yeah. Nice little sword. Um, maybe just with a bit of the um, original uh, Cantor blue, just some like little chips here on the. Okay, so a uh, nice little power sword here. Um, yeah, I think the, the arm will just look uh, perfect like that once it's uh, glued in place. And yeah, I think uh, we will come back for the Volta in the next chapter. And after that, we will already glue the arms in place and uh, touch up the shoulder pads. Okay, cool. Awesome.